Hey guys, it's Susan from the Social Sales Girls and I'm here with our 15 minute feedback for June. So if you don't know what 15 minute feedback is, it's something that we do for our inner circle members where they can submit an application, they give us their site, they tell us about their one burning issue, something that's really kind of keeping them up at night. And uh, I take a look, do some homework, and tell them what I think in the video, and give them three things I think they need to do that will get them closer to getting what they want. And uh, in exchange for that, they let us share it with everybody so that you all can learn from what's going on with their sites. Really generous of them to do that. So today, I am uh, doing 15-minute feedback on a company called Catch the Fire Worship Flags super, super niched. It's an inner circle member. Her name is Andrea that runs it. And just to give you a little background, she's been a member of the inner circle for a few months. She is super active in the group. She's working hard to grow her business. She shares a lot um, and she tries a lot and shares her results. And so because of that, she's a perfect candidate for 15 minute feedback because we all kind of know her, like her, we're cheering her on. And so I was really happy um, to see her application and, and happy to, to do this for her. So Andrea has been in business since 2011, so she's not a newbie. She sells on Amazon and Etsy, uh, but her sales have been sliding a little bit on Amazon and Etsy, and uh, she wants to grow her direct consumer business online. Now she has a new website on WordPress. It was new in April, I think. And um, she's got a burning question. And her burning question is this. And it's since she got her new website and since she's been driving more traffic to her site, you know, after she met us, uh, her bounce rate's gone up. In fact, she feels like it's almost double what it was before uh, she started driving traffic and had this new website. And so she sent me lots of info, some Google Analytics screenshots, and um, I had a good look. And so here's what I want to tell you, Andrea, right off the bat, is that your bounce rate average for the year, 42%, but I know it's climbing. And so for a snapshot period more recently, it was up to 54%. And so while that's not the very best bounce rate going, it's actually kind of average. It's not awful. It's kind of normal. And what I would say is you didn't have such a high bounce rate before because you didn't have traffic that, was, uh, that you were trying to generate leads from. And so there's a couple of things that you need to think about. You really can't use, uh, look at your bounce rate independently of a few things. So one of the things I looked at when I decided you're fine was uh, your time on site. And so your average visitor is spending over three minutes on your site. So even if they bounce, and some of those could because they might have only seen one page, you have a ton of content on your pages. So we know that they're spending time reading. So that's a good thing. The other thing that I noticed was that uh, the average visitor looks at four and a half pages. So again, that's reassuring to me that you're actually driving the right kind of traffic. So if your bounce rate was say 75 and people were spending 15 seconds or 10 seconds on your site, that would be a different conversation. But I think you're good. So I want you to put the blinders on and, and not worry so much about your bounce rate. So you are completely within the normal range. Um, but having said that, you do have a problem. Sorry, but it's not your bounce rate. You have a conversion problem, my friend, for sure. Um, you know, your conversion rate is not good at all. So what I would say to you is that you have one of the highest, uh, like most highly niched stores of anyone I know in our group. And generally what I see with people that have those um, highly niched stores is that their conversion rate is usually, if everything's going well, usually above average, like above 2% or above one and a half percent. And with yours, what I'm seeing is that it's actually considerably below. I mean, across all screens, your conversion rate is 0.84 that's not great and so what I would say is we need to take the focus off traffic for you I mean what I looked at was traffic of around seven or eight thousand which isn't stellar but it's it's okay um, but we need to look at conversion because I think that we need to fix that problem before we talk about driving more traffic and so I think your conversion rate needs to be well over two percent because I 
do think you are bringing the right people there. So good news and bad news. <laughs> Here's the good news first. The good news is that you, I'm looking at my notes, you have a small audience of highly hyper-engaged people, and that's great. I mean, that is better than having a large audience of people who are just like, who? <laughs> Catch the what? You know, you've got that big audience and, or that uh, engaged audience, and that's really golden, and that's probably why you're getting the conversion that you're getting. Now, the other th part of good news, I think, is that you are as authentic as they come. You are present, you are fun, you are memorable, but you're real, right? You are walking the talk. Oh, yeah, walking the talk. You're walking the talk. And so those people know that you are for them. And so they are interested in everything you do. You know, generally they will consume your content. That's the good news. So here's the bad news. And this is what I'm going to give you your action steps on. The first thing is your messaging is really weak, like really weak. And so um, until you fix it, I feel like we're going to have a, a struggle to uh, up your conversion rate to get you more sales. So we're going to talk about that. And then the second thing is, even though you have a new website, the user experience is not great. And I think that's a barrier for you to get conversions. Sorry, I've got people messaging me. So um, I think before you can expect to sell more, we need to make some changes. We need to fix some stuff because I think you're actually letting a lot of people slip right through the cracks. I think you pique their interest and then we let them down on the back end. So let's talk about where I think you're losing them and what I think you can do to fix them or to fix that. So what I'm going to say to you is that because you're selling to a really, really specific customer, like I, really specific. Um, not only do they have to have a strong faith, but they have to be, um, they ha it's almost like you're speaking a different language to them. It's really, really different than what I've seen on other faith-based sites. And so the people who get it, they're fine. We got them covered and you're appealing to them in a big way and they're buying, right? But there's this whole world of other people that are um, sort of interested in what you've got. They have a strong faith, but they don't know about uh, these flags for worship and they aren't getting what they need. They're not getting enough info from you to make a decision about whether they will go ahead and buy. And so we need to fix that. So when I look at your messaging and I've been to your product pages and your home page and your about page, here's what I actually, I'm going to share my screen and let everybody see. So here we are. So this is Andrea's uh, home page, and you can see, um, you can see that if we look at some of the language here, right? It's really like for those of us that don't have a strong faith, we're like, yeah, I don't know what that is. Now, there are people that do have a strong faith that also don't know what that is. And there's a couple of them in our group. And I'm going to talk to you about that later. But what we need to do is we need to think about how people feel when they hit your site. And I want to give you this analogy. So the analogy I'm going to give you is that when somebody hits your site, it's kind of like uh, somebody who's in eighth grade and we take them out of eighth grade and we drop them into a 12th grade calculus class. And they sit there and they, we know they like math because, you know, they took the path that dropped them there. They like math. Um, but what they don't know is what's going on with calculus, like why this is important, how it works, and what's in it for them. Like why should they apply this to their, you know, growing math skills. And so if we think about that, the language that you use here is not plain enough to bring those people who don't understand about uh, worship flags further into your circle. And so it's pretty easy to do this. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a quick way to indoctrinate um, people into the benefit of using your worship flags. And so what I want you to do, so this is job one, I want you to answer two questions. The first thing I want you to answer is, who is this for? And then the second question is, I want you to answer, 
what is the benefit to them of using these flags? Just those two things. And I want you to come up with something short and clear, something that will catch their attention of the people who are mildly interested, you know, who just want to know more. And that's really your goal with this. Like what I see is people want to say blah, 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 and also blah, 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 but that's not what we want. What we want is we want uh, to give them just enough information so that they are prompted or they are motivated to find out more. And so even though I don't know anything about worship flags, um, I think you want something like uh, something that lets people self-identify. So something like come worshipers um, and see the colors of the kingdom. Now, I'm not sure that that's right because as I, as I said, I don't have, um, I don't have that background. But there are a couple of people in our inner circle group. One is Sarah, who's the community manager. The other one's Jasmine Grindle, um, who also is an admin in there. Both of them have a very strong faith. Um, but I'm confident I've had a conversation with Sarah and I'm pretty sure with Jasmine who is a has a faith-based business too that neither one of them know anything about this and so those are the people you're trying to attract so when you're trying to come up with this sentence that uh, makes people want to know more helps them self-identify and makes them want to take the next step those are the people I want you to run it by because I think you're too deep into this to really uh, speak to those people, but they're a great resource for you. So ask them, ask in the group. There's several faith-based uh, entrepreneurs in the group actually, but those two stick out. So here's how you have to implement after you've come up with this sentence. First of all, it has to go right here. It has to go right on your hero image so that they know to click more. And in your case, I'm going to say the call to action should be something like learn more rather than we can't take them straight to shopping until we um, further uh, broaden their horizons on what's possible if they buy these flags. And so I want you to come up with that. I want you to get it on the hero image. But the other thing I want you to do is create a new menu item that's why worship flags. And what I want you to do on that menu item is, I'm reading my notes, I want you to send people there, of course, that want to learn more, but I want you to have a page, might have one of your beautiful videos on it, but I want you to indoctrinate them, explain and in plain language why you love these flags, what... Uh, you know, how it makes you feel closer to God or whatever it is. I know there's a lot of um, interest in the colors. I don't know whether you have to get that detailed, but you have to tell them what's in it for them to try these flags. And so you, in plain language, not in um, the, the, the language of the people that are already your customers. It's plain language for people who might be your customers. So, um, Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. And on that page, you're gonna have an opt-in for people to actually learn more or to get on your regular email list so that you can start sending them more information. So then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your very best performing video, and I know you have some good videos, and you are going to set up an indoctrination post. And so again, I want you to talk in plain language, and what we wanna do is get this really beautiful video with your beautiful flags in front of people who could potentially be interested. And so generally, what I say with these posts, uh, like with a video post, I say, short copy, short copy, short copy. But for you, it's different, right? Because you're talking to like such a specific person. So I think long copy is okay. And you can actually start with some sort of hook and tell a little bit of a story. And so you might say, uh, did you ever wonder how you can, you know, whatever, how you can come closer to God or how you can add uh, more, uh, a, bit, a deeper connection in your next service or uh, whatever like you'll know the language much better than I would 
Um, and again, you could use some of the people in the group as a good resource for that. But you want to say that, and then that's the hook, right? Do you wonder, or are you looking for ways, or whatever it is? And then you can tell your story. And then this is one of those instances where I think a learn more call to action button would be good. And what you're going to do is you're going to take them back to this page that you're creating on your website. And so we can then develop an audience for people who've watched that video, which you will use as an ad, and also for people who have hit that page. So you'll have two really solid, warm audiences that we can then hit with um, opportunities to opt in or uh, opportunities to buy. And so that was a long, uh, big long explanation, but I think it's really going to work for you. And so I've, I'm going to send you my notes so that you'll have it all spelled out. So the other thing I would say is each week you want to uh, do a, a post on social that is also indoctrinating people on why the why they want to do this and the benefit. And so it can be different. Just continue to educate them. Um, but lead with the benefit, lead with what's in it for them, and then they can read more if they want. So that's what I want you to do. That's your messaging. And I think that's going to go a long way to cleaning up the user experience and getting people more in a place where they're ready to buy when they hit your website. Now, the second thing is we got to talk about it. And I'm very sad to tell you about this, the website experience, because I know it's new. But there are just some basic fundamental shortcomings with this website. Um, first of all, I think it's very slow to load. It, it has been very slow for me to load, and I don't experience that on other sites. So I'm a bit concerned that there's something going on in the background that's really slowing you down. Now, I also don't think the search function works very well, and I will uh, expand on that uh, later because I tried it. And um, the other thing I'm looking, uh, I think you do a great job of catching people's attention with your beautiful videos, for sure. Um, but I think when they go to shop and the purpose of your business, is ultimately to sell product. And I think it's a real letdown when they go to shop. So if I click on this, so all of a sudden, these beautiful flags are like just a bunch of images, a bunch of thumbnail images, and they're just not going to pull people in. Now, obviously, if people that are really interested, and so yes, they might click, but it's just not enough. It's not a uh, like it's just over menued, it's noisy, it's still little. Like I think if I click one more time, I might get a bigger image. Maybe not. I think I have in some of them. It's just too many clicks and it's just not great. Um, the other thing I would say is that, again, you could do more plain language on these posts um, and go for the big stuff down here, but even more plain language here. So, because what we've got here is a bit of an overwhelming experience, I think, for people who are just warming up. Um, if you looked at the, uh, the walk-in clinic question and answer yesterday, like I showed you the number of times people have to hit your site before they buy, and um, this might stop them from coming back again, is my guess. So lastly, I would say that your website looks like a blog. This looks like, a, and I'm, clearly it's on WordPress, but it looks like a blog. And it looks like the e-commerce part of your website is an afterthought. That it's not the main function of this site. And so I'm sure that you have a loyal following that are totally fine with this. But as it is, I think you're not going to grow that audience and expand your business like you want because it just doesn't function well enough. It doesn't function as well as it should for e-commerce. And so I know that you just launched this site, so this might not be possible. Um, but what I would really suggest is that you gotta move to uh, a, a template or a theme on Shopify that is really image rich and video rich. Something that you can post a lot of your amazing videos and, and a lot of really good images. And, and you won't have to call, pay a developer be, 
as much as you would on WordPress because it is a template that works and that you um, take your blog and you either use it, pay someone to move your blog over to the Shopify blog or you host it as a subdomain on Shopify. So I know that costs some money and it takes some time. I think it's a, a good investment. It uh, would allow your product to be the star of the show. Having said that, if you can't do that, there are some things you can do to fix it up. And so what I would say, you gotta flip this and you've gotta make the focus the product here. And so a couple of things, we have way too many opt-ins, way too many reasons to opt-in. You need a pop-up and a footer opt-in. Um, so that's the first thing. And then you've got to make a, like, we don't need this. It's too much. We don't need all this. Like the blog has to be a separate menu category and we can't see all this stuff. We need to focus on product. So you could have your hero image. You could have your most popular video with a link here, like the start of the indoctrination post and then a link to read the rest of it. And then what I would suggest is this has to be product. Like okay, two, and I'm going to talk about that, two products underneath, big pictures, videos, whatever you want, but it's got to take them to your best products. So what I would say to you is the experience on desktop is not great, but here's the thing. I'm just going to show you something. So I have to stop sharing, and um, I'm going to start sharing again, and I'm going to share the mobile experience and something awful might happen. Like we might actually, uh, there we go. Yeah, iTunes opens up, no idea why. Okay, so 60% of your traffic is mobile and this is what they see when they get there. So um, it's not good. Like this is not, this is, there's not one thing on here that's compelling and is gonna bring people in further. Frankly, I don't know how much traffic you have from the EU, but I would really think long and hard about this, whether I would want to have that there. Um, you've got a rewards program. I don't know if uh, you have enough repeat business to be taking up space on your site. Um, you've got an, something up here, a search button, and then like the hero image, which doesn't tell us much. Like it's just not a good experience. It's too messy. It's not clean and straightforward enough. And if I go, let me try the shop now button. This is where I'm finding like it's really taking a long way. So then I get this, this thing, this full screen thing. And I think that's, that's a bad plan too. Like this looks kind of like I'm going back to your blog. And so I want you to jump on your phone and look at, um, like we squeaks is not perfect. Uh, you know, I do, I am an 80% girl all the way, but I think just look at our website on mobile because we actually designed our site on mobile. So the changes that I'm asking you to make to your website, uh, if you don't go with Shopify, I would really like you to make them on mobile first because that's the way the world is going. And so it's got to look best on the phone. The other thing I would say, we went to, we talked about it, a pop-up and a footer opt-in. That's it on the home screen. And there should be a callback for your pop-up. Like there should be a little tab here somewhere that says whatever your offer is. Because most people shut them down right away, but they will go back if you pull them in a little further. And right now there's no opportunity to get it back. So I think, let me just see if I missed anything. It's a lot of talking. Oh, one more thing. Okay, signature product. So I recommend we all have a signature product. It's the star of the show. And that's the product that you sell the most of and it brings more people in. It's visually appealing usually. You should spend most of your ad dollars uh, when you're trying to get new people in on that signature product. And when I look at your Google Analytics, what I would say is that you have one item that is 12% of your sales and you have two items together, the first and the second, that are 20% of your sales. And so on your home page, I think that that's the two items you have, your top item and your next item. And the reason I know that your search is a problem is because I tried to take that item, the top item, put it in the search bar, and I couldn't get a result. 
And so there's a disconnect there somewhere. If somebody is searching, I think it was angel wing or something, they should be able to go right to the product. And so I think that we just have a lot of cleanup work to do. And I bet you, if you do that, you're going to see your sales, uh, like your conversion rate spike. And you already know how to get good traffic. That's your first lesson that you learned. So now let's clean this up, get some good conversion, and then you can step on the gas to get more traffic and know that you're, um, you're prepared to serve them properly on the other end. And so those signature products should be what you talk about in most of your uh, posts, particularly when you're advertising, I would say, those two signature products that you have. So I think... Um, that's it. So here's what I would say, like I, you know, kind of didn't sugarcoat any of this, which I hope is okay. I hope it wasn't offensive, but I think it, but the opportunity for you is here. I think you can do really well with this. I think you've done a great job getting it this far. You've built that loyal audience. So you have social proof, you've got a unique product. You've got people who want that product, also good. And I think that, that those videos that you use are gonna pull a lot of people into your universe. They're really good, you do a great job with those. Um, but I think you need to implement some of these changes to start getting sales. So I just wanna recap. First thing you're gonna do is work on your messaging and then you're gonna make those suggested changes. Why worship flags and do that one video with the indoctrination post and let's get that out into the universe. So we're definitely going to do that plain language. Second thing is we got to declutter this site. If we're not going to move to Shopify, we got to declutter this site. We need to focus on e-commerce product first. Okay. Product first for sure. So make sure you look at a phone, a mobile phone to make those changes. And then the third thing is let's get those signature products out front and center. Let's put a focus on getting them out on social media and driving traffic to those two products. We'll sell the other products too, but we really need to say, it's kind of like if you're at a store and you don't know what to buy and someone says to you who works there, well, actually, this is the most popular. What do you do? Most chant times, we, you know, we're swimming downstream with everyone else. We buy the most popular product. So that's it. I have a feeling I'm past 15 minutes, but I really want to thank you, Andrea, for letting me take a look, for trusting me to tell you, um, and, you know, steering you in a different direction. And thank you for letting me share it with others, because I know it's going to help a lot of people. You do such a great job participating in the inner circle. We really value you as a member. And I feel like we all kind of, you know, know, like, and trust you. So we are all cheering for you. Um, and I want to tell you that that was a big factor in why I chose you this month. So I'm going to sign off. I hope this is helpful and we'll see you back in the group.